Does eating a high protein diet damage your kidneys? Some people say that eating too much protein will give you chronic kidney disease or a CKD, whereas others say that a high protein diet is good for just about everything. Today I am going over scientific studies to get to the bottom of this debate. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And this episode topic actually came from a request from one of our patrons over on Patreon. So if you are interested in making video topic requests and asking questions of your own, then head on over to Patreon, which is linked in the description below. And today I will be getting into the question of how high protein diets affect your kidneys separately for people with chronic kidney disease or CKD and for people with healthy kidneys. And towards the end, I will talk about some pretty major caveats to all this, along with how things vary by the type of protein, as well as how much protein counts as high protein. So stick around till the end if you wanna get the full answer on this question of how protein affects your kidneys. So the main reason for the idea that a high protein diet is bad for your kidneys comes from the fact that your kidneys are very sensitive to protein intake. So after a high protein meal, the workload on your kidneys really increases. For example, something called glomerular hyperfiltration really increases after eating a lot of protein, which is an index of a higher workload on your kidneys and which relates to higher pressure inside the parts of your kidneys that are doing the filtering. So the question is, how bad is this really for your kidneys? First, for people with kidney disease, the evidence is strong that a high protein diet does accelerate kidney damage. So it is strongly recommended that people with kidney disease or even pre-kidney disease limit their protein intake and really avoid high protein diets. This one's pretty simple and clear cut. So most of this video will be about the more gray area of people with healthy kidneys or slightly impaired kidney function. But even for people with CKD, there are some nuances in terms of protein type, which I'll get into at the end. But what about people who don't have any signs of CKD or even pre-CKD? Well, studies have found that for people who have risk factors for CKD, like diabetes or stroke or high blood pressure, eating a high protein diet does really seem to accelerate or even cause kidney decline over time. So what this implies is if kidney integrity has been compromised in any way, for example, from having high blood pressure, even if it's not showing up as kidney damage on blood tests, eating a high protein diet can accelerate that kidney damage and then lead to CKD later on. But when you look at super healthy people who don't have high blood pressure or obesity or strokes or diabetes and who don't have any signs of lowered kidney function, the evidence is less clear. Some randomized controlled trials have found some evidence for kidney function decline over the long term when eating a high protein diet, but it really varies across different measures of kidney function and it's just a lot less consistent and a lot weaker than all the other studies I've been talking about. And one issue with the interpretation of these findings in super healthy people of kidney decline over time is that they often use hyperfiltration as the measure when they do find effects. So what happens with high protein diets, as a reminder, is that your hyperfiltration goes up. So your kidneys are having to work harder to deal with all that protein. So what happens in these studies is that initially when you put people on a high protein diet, their hyperfiltration really goes up. And then over time, that hyperfiltration goes down. So a lot of studies interpret this to suggest that people's kidneys are essentially getting tired over time on a high protein diet. So they're no longer having the same hyperfiltration response to protein because the kidneys are just tired out and they just cannot increase that workload anymore because they've been doing it so long. Kind of like revving your car's engine like crazy for a long time is gonna make it so it won't be able to rev as much once it's kind of worn down the engine. Sorry if those are terribly non-technical terms for those of you who are experts in cars. And so this trend is generally interpreted as potentially kidney damage, but it seems just as sensible that you could interpret this as kidney adaptation. So people's kidneys might just be getting used to this high protein diet. And without enough evidence, this logic that high protein diets are causing kidney damage because they're causing hyperfiltration kind of feels like the people who say that high blood sugar from eating a high carbohydrate meal causes diabetes, which we know is patently not true from the studies. But it is an easy mistake to make if you don't have an advanced understanding of physiology or how to interpret studies. So to keep going with this analogy, eating sugar becomes dangerous for someone with diabetes potentially just like eating protein becomes dangerous for someone with compromised kidney function. So it's not the case that eating sugar causes diabetes and it may not be the case that eating protein causes 
kidney damage in already healthy kidneys that have no signs of damage yet. But if you are someone who believes strongly that sugar causes diabetes, then to be consistent, you should also believe that eating protein causes kidney disease. Because there's actually more evidence for the latter than the former. But based on the evidence, I just don't think we have enough strong evidence to say that eating protein is going to cause kidney damage in people with totally healthy kidneys. Because increasing workload on the kidneys might not be problematic if your kidneys are fine. However, there are some big caveats here. So first, it is estimated that about 75% of people with CKD are actually undiagnosed and don't know that they have CKD. And the percentage of people who are diagnosed with CKD is around 13% and expected to increase. So if we combine these two stats, it implies that about half of people over 30 have CKD or pre-CKD, so some kind of compromised kidney function. You may be shocked, but this actually makes a lot of sense if we consider the risk factors that have been found to predict or even cause kidney damage and chronic kidney disease, including things like being obese, eating a Western diet, having diabetes, or having high blood pressure. For example, over half of US adults have been obese at some time in their life, and 80% or more of people are expected to have hypertension or high blood pressure at some point in their lives, and most people have eaten a Western diet in some point of their lives, and about a third of people have diabetes at some point. So given how rampant these risk factors and causes of CKD are, it's not surprising that CKD would also be pretty rampant. So making the assumption that your kidneys are totally healthy is a pretty big assumption to make with how incredibly common these risk factors are and how prevalent CKD is estimated to be. So even if you have normal labs, like blood tests, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a compromised kidney function. It just means it's not being picked up, either because it's not bad enough yet, or because the meals you ate before the test changed your levels of hyperfiltration or creatinine or the other things that are looked at. Because unfortunately, kidney blood tests really fluctuate with what you've eaten recently. So even if your blood tests come back normal for your kidneys, proceed with caution when it comes to a high protein diet, especially if you've ever had one of these common risk factors for CKD, like if you've ever been obese or ever had high blood pressure or ever had insulin resistance or prediabetes or anything like that. It's really not clear if the damage has already been done or if your kidneys may have recovered from that damage. So definitely caution is warranted. And now for the type of protein, it really seems like the type of protein you eat matters a lot for your kidneys. So for animal-based proteins, you usually find that they are very damaging to the kidneys, especially in people with CKD or impaired kidney function. Whereas plant-based proteins like soy, in fact, have actually been found to improve kidney function in people with damaged kidneys. And some reasons for this could be that animal-based proteins have a higher acid load, which is tough on the kidneys. And also because so many animal-based proteins cause inflammation, whereas plant-based proteins generally reduce inflammation. And inflammation is one of the damaging factors for the kidney. And in particular, red and processed meats seem to be particularly problematic for kidney function, similarly to how they are problematic for causing cancer and stroke and heart disease and diabetes. So it could be that one reason why some animal proteins are worse for kidney function is that they increase these other risk factors or other causes of kidney decline. And in fact, one of the established recommendations for people with impaired kidney function are to replace their animal proteins with plant-based proteins. And now for what counts as a high protein diet and what the protein quantity recommendations are for people with different types of kidney function, people who have chronic kidney disease or pre-CKD as well are generally recommended to eat between 0.6 and 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And if you are someone who has a risk factor or multiple risk factors for CKD, like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, then it is recommended that you aim for less than one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So for example, if you are a 200 pound person, then it's recommended that you eat less than 90 grams of protein per day. So the main takeaway is if you have chronic kidney disease or any other cause of compromised renal function, then a high protein diet is probably a bad idea because the evidence does suggest that it can contribute to kidney decline and kidney damage. On the other hand, if you have truly healthy, perfectly intact kidneys, then a high protein diet is probably fine. The issue, however, is that given the really high estimated prevalence of kidney damage, it's really hard to know if you do actually have truly totally healthy kidneys. So if you do choose to eat a high protein diet, then I would really recommend having caution and getting regular blood tests to keep an eye on your kidney function in case your kidneys do start to dip into that detectably damaged zone on blood tests. If you find my videos useful or interesting and you wanna help support me in continuing to make them, then please consider heading on over to my Patreon 
or the GoFundMe. On the Patreon, we've got bonus content, Q&As, and more, whereas the GoFundMe is for if you want to make a one-time donation to help support me in making these videos. If you like this video, please like and share it so other people can get this information. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.